It's okay then. Okay, there is a cloud recording. Anyway, okay, we will start okay with our lecture today. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you guys are ready. Okay, uh, the topic that I want to cover today is going to be entropy revision and Gibbs free energy. Later part, we are going to do the electrochemistry. So here, okay, this is going to be a repetition of what we have done earlier. Okay, what is entropy? Okay, entropy is a measure of number of possible arrangement of the particles and their energy, or in so, uh, simple terms, we can say it's a measure of disorder of the system. Okay, so if people, uh, if let's say there is question, okay, that they are asking you, what is the meaning of entropy? You just tell about it's a measure of disorder of the system. Okay, that is accepted. Okay, so this is going to be something that is very important because every single time, okay, when they ask question on entropy, if you have done past year papers, you will know that, okay, they ask you about the definitions of entropy. Okay, so this is very important. Now, comparing the entropy value, okay, so we have certain factors that you need to know. Okay, it's a measure of disorder. Something that has more disorder, it means they have greater entropy. Okay, so it means if you look at gases, gases have higher entropy compared to liquid and solid generally have lower entropy. Yeah, you can see all the examples that I've circled over there. Now, second thing is going to be simpler substances with fewer atoms, they have lower entropy value. Okay, for example, if you compare carbon dioxide, dioxide and carbon monoxide okay carbon dioxide has more atoms so therefore we, uh, we consider that okay having more uh, possibilities of arrangement okay if you have more arrangement it means that the entropy for carbon dioxide okay both of them are gas okay both of them are gas so if i want to compare the entropy of carbon dioxide is going to be higher because why greater number of atoms okay that is going to be another factors that you can weigh in when you compare the entropy values. Another thing that you can compare is going to be uh, related to the hardness of a structure. For example, okay, we know diamond and graphite, okay, they are known as allotropes. Okay? Uh, so these allotropes, okay, allotropes are uh, built from carbon but different arrangement okay and we know everyone should know okay diamond is more harder okay it's hard compared to graphite okay harder substance therefore they are more rigid okay if they are rigid means they are not moving around okay they are not uh, going here and there okay because it's more ordered okay if something that is more ordered okay we can say that the entropy is going to be lower Okay. On the other hand, graphite okay, is going to be more soft. They can move around like uh, uh, the layers of the graphite. They can slide on top of each other. Okay. Therefore, they are less rigid, okay, less rigid, and they are going to be less ordered. Okay, less ordered, or you can say they are disordered. Therefore, okay, their entropy is going to be greater. Okay, so this is going to be how you compare. Okay, the next part is going to be if you have, okay, if you have, uh, you have like, for example, ice, water, and steam, okay, all these are from H2O, okay, we know that ice is going to be more rigid, okay, water is going to be more disordered, steam is much more disordered, okay, so you can see the entropy values, okay, this is lower entropy, and this having higher entropy because more disordered. Okay, if you want to represent them in form of diagram, this is going to be the diagram for entropy versus the temperature, okay, where this is going to be your melting point and this is going to be your boiling point. Yeah, you can refer to your textbook. Now, if you look at entropy in terms of reactions, okay, if let's say you have this reaction, if you can look over here, there is solid and then suddenly there is a formation of gas, okay? So the more gas molecules that is formed, okay, in the products, it tells you that, okay, it tells us that there is greater number of ways of arrangement. It means this one, the entropy at the product is going to be greater. So if I'm just going to predict, okay, if I'm going to predict for this reaction, what will be the entropy change? Okay, I can predict the entropy change is going to be positive, okay, because from solid, okay, you are getting solid and gas, okay, from ordered, 
okay, you are going to get disordered. Okay, so therefore your entropy change, okay, most likely is going to be positive. Okay, you can predict. And you can say if it is going to be decrease in entropy, how do I predict that? You look at the equation from gas, okay, and then give you gas. But if you look at this four, okay, four moles of gas, okay, one mole and three moles from hydrogen, one mole from nitrogen, okay, and then they are going to give you two moles of ammonia. Okay, there is a decrease in the number of molecules of gases. Okay, because of that, okay, we can say there is going to be uh, from uh, disordered. Okay, they are going to become a bit more ordered. Okay, therefore, I can say the entropy is going to become negative because it's decreasing. Okay, it's decreasing. So you can say that. Yeah. Do remember, if you forget about this, what is the meaning? This means change. Okay. So when I say this one, this is entropy change. Okay. What is the change? Whether is it increasing from here to here or is it decreasing from here to here? Okay. So negative tells us it is decreasing. Positive is telling us that it is increasing. Okay. I will move on. Now, before we go for our AS prelim, okay, I introduce to you this formula. Okay, this formula is telling us about to calculate the entropy, okay, entropy of the system. You just get the entropy of the products and then you minus the entropy of the reactants. And we have done some questions about that. Okay, so if you look at this example over here, okay, calcium oxide, okay, it is given calcium oxide. So what you need to do, if you want to find the entropy change of the system, okay, what I need to do is going to be two moles, okay, two times, okay, 39.7, okay, this is going to be your product, and you minus with the reactant, okay, the reactant oxygen is going to be 205, okay, and then this one is going to be two moles, okay, 41, 0 0.40. You close the bracket and you find the answer. Okay. If you find the answer, you will get this. Okay. So if you look at this as well, okay, you can see solid and gas giving you solid only. Okay. You can see gas to become solid. You can predict. Okay. Gas to become solid. Okay. That is less number of molecules of gas. So they are going to become from uh, disorder. Okay, they are going to become more ordered. Okay, so if they become ordered, okay, the entropy change is supposed to be negative, and you can see. Okay, now, okay, from predicting, we are upgrading to calculating. Okay, that is very important. Okay, so you need to learn how to use this formula. Okay, done. Okay, so this is a summary, okay, of what we have learned before your prelim. Okay, you need to know, okay, define the term of entropy, and you need to explain the sign of entropy change in following condition, if temperature changes and so on. Okay, if there is increase in temperature, of course, the particles will start to move more randomly. Okay, they are going to become more, um, they are going to become more disordered. Okay, so if it is more disordered, increase in temperature is going to make your entropy change to become positive. They are going to become more disordered. Okay, positive means they are going to become more disordered. So you can use that. Okay, and then during a reaction when there is a change in number of gases molecules, we have went through all this just now. And then we also learn about this. Okay, please take note this one. If you find in your textbook, even in the new syllabus, a new textbook and the old textbook, they still maintain that, okay? But in your new syllabus, okay, this is from your new syllabus, okay, taken from your syllabus, this is not required. So we are not going to study about that, okay? No need to study about something that is not going to be asked, yeah? So I will move on for today's lesson, okay? Today's lesson is going to be about Gibbs free energy change, okay? Free energy change. Now, what is important in Gibbs free energy change, okay? Now, we know that a system will become from, let's say, for example, if I say entropy change is going to be positive, okay? It means that from...
Mr. Gopi, I, th I think it's reconnecting Miss Ine, right? Yes, Miss. Hello? Yeah, Miss. Yeah, I think so. I'm sorry, I got disconnected for a while, yeah? Okay, anyway, I will continue again, okay? You see, yeah? When you say entropy is increasing, okay, which is going to be positive, we know that that is ordered to become disordered, okay? So that is going to be entropy that is going to be positive, okay? But now, okay, if you have, okay, uh, if you want to find out, okay, whether a reaction is going to be feasible, or whether the reaction is going to be spontaneous, okay? Knowing the entropy alone is not enough, okay? You need to know about Gibbs free energy, okay? Like, for example, if you, uh, if you want to say rusting, yeah, we know, everyone should know, okay? At the beginning, we should know that rusting is a, a spontaneous reaction, okay? So how do we identify, how do we calculate Okay, whether to say that this particular reaction is spontaneous or not. Okay, therefore, okay, there is going to be a formula which you need to know, which is going to be known as Gibbs free energy change. Now, what is important? I will tell you what is important. Okay, but please remember this. Okay, what you need to remember is simple. Yeah. Okay, in the past, okay, we need to know how to derive this formula. But now, okay, because of the syllabus change, you do not, you are not expected to know about this. Okay, it is still available in the textbook, I assume. Okay, I took it from the old textbook. Okay, but what we need to know is only this. Okay, the one that I uh, highlighted over there. Gibbs free energy is going to be the enthalpy. This is enthalpy change, okay, minus the temperature times the change in entropy. Okay, if you want to remember, uh, you can say uh, uh, Mr. Gopi is not Mr. Gopi is not so hot. Okay, if you want to say that, yeah. Okay, if you want to remember, this one is for the weaker students. You know, you want to memorize the formula, sir. Too many formula to remember. Ah, uh, gives free energy. Okay, it's not hot. Okay, you just remember hot. Okay, this one is going to be negative. Okay, it's not hot. Okay, and then if you want to remember C, yeah, C step. Okay, anyway, okay, you should know by this time, okay, your Gibbs free energy is going to be your enthalpy change. I'll make it simple a bit. I'll remove all the triangles, yeah. Okay, it's going to be minus with the temperature, okay, you times with this uh, change in entropy. Okay, so what you need to remember is going to be this formula alone. And the temperature that we use must be in Kelvin. Uh, this is another common mistake that students will do. Okay, they keep it in degrees Celsius. You must change it into Kelvin. Okay, and do remember the moment you see this symbol. Okay, sir, I don't see any temperature available in that question. This is under standard condition. Standard condition is going to be 25 degrees Celsius, which is even they don't tell you, okay, the temperature is going to be in Kelvin is 298. You plus with 273. Okay, this is very important. So we look at these examples, okay? You can see now I want to calculate Gibbs free energy. But before that, one very important stuff, okay? Before I forget, what is important over here, okay? In order you calculate, after you calculate, okay, Gibbs free energy must be always negative, okay? The final answer must be always negative, okay? In order to say that reaction is spontaneous, or if I want to say that reaction is feasible, okay? This is very important. So what we are looking for, we are looking for negative value, okay? Negative value. But when you apply the formula, there is a trick also. Please remember, what is the trick, okay? Because some students will do careless mistake over here because, okay, enthalpy change is given in kilojoule, okay? Your entropy is given in joule. So you need to make sure that you are calculating using the same unit, okay? That's why, 
Okay, I prefer, I think in the textbook also, they prefer to change it into Joule first, okay? All this enthalpy change, do remember the formula that I want to use is this formula, okay? I need to change, okay, this into Joule times with 1,000, okay? And first thing that I need to calculate is going to be my entropy, okay? What is entropy? Okay, entropy is going to be product minus reactant. You calculate, we have already learned about this, okay? Once you calculate, you get this value, and they are in Joule per Kelvin per mole, okay? And, okay, when you want to calculate the Gibbs free energy, okay, you use the Gibbs free energy, the formula, okay? You know how to uh, memorize this formula by now, okay? If you cannot remember, remember, Mr. Gopi is not so hot, see? Uh, you put that formula, okay? But if you already know, if it is already sticking in your mind, okay, just simply use the formula, but make sure, okay, you use the same unit. 71,000, okay, temperature, okay, they have given the temperature here, okay, but if they don't give also, doesn't matter because you see here, all these are representing 298 Kelvin, yeah, so 298, okay, and then the system, okay, entropy of the system, you have already calculated, and if you calculate, you have this value, which is going to be a positive value, now, since it is a positive value, we are looking for a negative value. If we want to find out whether this reaction is going to be spontaneous or not, okay, the reaction in this case is positive, therefore the reaction is non-spontaneous at 298, okay? It's non-spontaneous. Why? Because Gibbs free energy is positive. I am looking for Gibbs free energy, which is negative. Please remember that. Okay, so if let's say I want to uh, check whether you guys understand about this. Okay, quite simple, yeah? Okay, you can see here, okay, all these entropy values are given. Okay, I will try to uh, show you A. Okay, so what you need to do is going to be first, okay, you check, this is kilojoule, okay, you change this one into joule, okay, negative 184.6 times 1000, okay, and then you are going to have, okay, negative 184600, okay, you have that, okay, and then next thing is going to be calculating your entropy change of the system. Okay, entropy change of the system is going to be entropy of the product minus entropy of the reactant. Okay, so entropy of the product, do see 2 HCl. Okay, so 2 times, okay, look for HCl here. Okay, HCl, where is HCl? Okay, let me look. Yeah, HCl, do check, it's gas, yeah? So it's gas, okay, 186.8, close the bracket. Okay, and then you minus the reactants. Okay, the reactants is hydrogen. So I check for hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen is going to be, okay, let me quickly check. Yeah, this is 130.6. Okay, no need to times anything. So plus Cl2, okay, Cl2 gas 165. Okay, you do this, okay, you will get a value. Okay, you can calculate. I'm not going to show you. Yeah, you can calculate. Once you calculate, okay, you just apply that formula, Gibbs free energy is going to be, take this value, negative 184600, okay, minus, okay, okay, minus, this one is going to be done, okay, at 298, okay, 298, you times, okay, with the entropy change, this value, okay, this value, you put it over here. Okay, once you do that, okay, you will get a final value. And that final value, okay, will be this one. Okay, I'll make it bigger. That final value is going to be that value. And that is negative, okay? And this is, what is the meaning of this negative, okay? It just tells you that this reaction, this particular reaction is spontaneous at 298. So when you want to identify a reaction is spontaneous or feasible, okay, you just need to always include the temperature. Okay, you need to include the temperature. What does it mean? It means at 25 degrees Celsius, okay, hydrogen and chlorine gas, okay, they can react to give you hydrogen chloride gas. Okay, that is the meaning. Okay, so this one is done. Okay, checkpoint one done. Okay, please do the same thing. Okay, you calculate, 
okay, like how I show you just now. You use the same thing, but okay, when you calculate, you are going to get, okay, if this one is positive, okay, what I can say, this is positive, non-spontaneous, and you make sure, okay, make sure, yeah, don't forget, make sure to include the temperature. It is non-spontaneous at 298. Very, very important, okay? I will move on, yeah? Now, the next part is, okay, prediction of feasibility of reaction, okay? Whether the reaction is going to be spontaneous or not, because most of the time, I calculate, okay? Just now, all the reaction, I calculate. But what if I can predict without calculating first, okay? Can you predict without calculating? Uh, this is the part that we need to master, yeah? Now, the prediction, let's say we have different conditions, yeah? Okay, because when I have this Gibbs free energy is going to be enthalpy change minus the temperature change in uh, entropy, right? Okay, we know that, okay, the, uh, there are going to be few factors that will influence your Gibbs free energy. First is your enthalpy change, okay? And second is going to be your entropy. And another factor that will influence this is going to be your temperature, yeah? There are three factors that will influence, okay, the formula, okay? Uh, they are the variables over here. But most of the time, okay, we will not include temperature, okay, because, okay, the temperature most of the time is standard condition 298, okay? If you are changing also, do remember this is still calculated in Kelvin, okay? So the temperature is still positive. Okay, still positive. So we are going to just focus on enthalpy and entropy. Let's see. What happens, okay, if I have my enthalpy using the formula, yeah, gives free energy, my enthalpy is going to be negative. This is a negative value. And my entropy is going to be positive. You see, this one is positive. Do remember, okay, the temperature is positive also. So what happens over here is, okay, when something, okay, when something is going to be negative, okay, negative, negative and plus is going to be negative also, okay? So negative and negative, for example, negative 50 minus 5, for example, you will get negative 55, okay? It means that if you have a situation where your enthalpy is negative, entropy is positive, most likely, yeah, the prediction is, okay, your Gibbs free energy is going to be negative. Therefore, okay, you can say that this is going to be spontaneous. Okay, this is our prediction. I'll come back to this again, yeah? Okay, I will just show you, okay, another slide, okay? Now, how about if I have my enthalpy is positive, my entropy is negative. I'll just show you the formula again. Okay, maybe some of you will be, uh, what is this? I'm already confused, okay? Just, okay, be calm. Okay, I'll explain to you in detail. Now, if you look over here, okay, if your enthalpy is positive, if this value is positive, and your entropy is negative, this value is negative, okay? If you are using your maths, negative and negative is going to be positive. If I'm using 50 plus five, I will get plus 55, okay? So what happens over here is, okay, your Gibbs free energy is automatically going to be positive at any temperature, okay, at any temperature. So this is telling us that this reaction is going to be non-spontaneous, okay? Now, I will combine these two first, yeah? You can see here what is the similarity in these two. Your enthalpy and entropy, they are having different signs, negative, positive, okay? Negative, positive. You can see here, this is positive and negative. They are different signs, okay? I want you to take note of that first, okay? Now, I will go for the third example here, okay? I'll combine everything together. Now, if I look at the third example here, okay, here, what happens if my enthalpy is negative, okay, and my entropy is also negative, okay, if I use the formula, okay, minus six. If this one is negative, okay, is this, this one is negative, 
and my entropy k is going to be negative. So this value is negative. Okay. So what will happen is going to be negative and negative is going to be plus. It's going to be slightly difficult. Why? Okay. Imagine I have negative 50. Plus with what? Okay. Is it a small number? Okay. If it is a small number, then I still have, okay, I still have negative 45. Still negative. What happens if I have negative 50, but I end up, okay, this value is more, yeah, because of the temperature, yeah. If it is value of the temperature is high, so let's say what happens, okay, if this value is 60, for example, I am going to get positive 10. So quite difficult to determine, yeah, quite difficult to determine. So I need to have, okay, uh, something, okay, to determine this, okay, so this one, I leave it first, okay, I leave it first, but what I notice, okay, what I notice over here is both of them are having same size, okay, same size, and, okay, this one, I'll just cut it short, okay, they have the same signs, positive and positive, the same situation, okay, the same situation, so, okay, if I use the formula, Gibbs free energy is going to be H, okay, and then minus this, okay, it means this is positive, okay, and then this value is positive, okay, so it depends, okay, my value, okay, positive and negative is negative, so if it is 50, I minus with uh, 60, I will get negative 10, but 50, if I minus 10, maybe I will get 40, positive and negative, it's difficult to say. So what determines this value? Temperature, okay, is going to determine over there. So what, okay, what am I going to say over here? Okay, if you want to predict, okay, simple way, yeah, because I, we want to know what is simple. We don't want to make things complicated, okay? If you have different signs, okay, for example, you see, yeah, Okay, your first example and second example, different signs, okay, different signs, okay, different signs, okay. The first thing that's supposed to come in your mind is, okay, what is easy, okay. If you have different signs, it's just a matter of spontaneous or non-spontaneous. So I divide, okay, I divide. So when I divide, okay, I will say my delta H, okay, and then my delta S, delta H, delta S, okay. And if your delta H, okay, your delta H is negative, delta S is going to be positive. You can see, yeah, different signs, okay. If you have this, this is going to be, because just now I show you using the formula, right? This is going to be spontaneous, okay, at any temperature. Okay, different signs, spontaneous. How to memorize? You see, exothermic entropy is greater. So it means they like to move around. Okay, hot, okay, and then they like to move around. Of course, they are going to be spontaneous. If you have different signs, for example, positive is an endothermic, and then your entropy is negative, it means it's becoming more ordered. Okay, the most likelihood, okay, this one is going to be at any temperature, this is going to be non-spontaneous. This is how you can memorize. Very, very easy, okay? I will pass this PowerPoint slide to you, yeah? So the one that I've written, okay, you still do not need to worry about it, yeah? So if you look at the prediction of feasibility of same signs, uh, this one is a bit tough, eh? okay? I'll just put over here. It's a bit tough. Okay, but this one thing that is tough also, we can make it simple. How? I'll teach you. Imagine this is solid. Okay, this is liquid. Okay, if I put the temperature over here, temperature is going to be zero degree Celsius. Okay, we know solid and liquid. Okay, they are under equilibrium. And solid can change into liquid, liquid can change into solid. Okay, let's say still couldn't understand, let's change it into something simple. Ice, okay, because zero degrees Celsius, the melting point of ice, right? So this is water. Let's say ice turn into water, okay? Everyone should know, yeah? Okay, ice turn into water, what kind of reaction is this? Delta H is going to be positive, endothermic reaction, yeah? And ice turning into water, ice is rigid, ordered, and water is going to be moving around. 
your entropy is also going to be positive. Okay, if you have this. Now, you have the reaction ice turning into water to be spontaneous at what condition? They are going to be spontaneous above, okay, above zero degrees. It means at this temperature. Okay, at this temperature. What you can say over here is, okay, at higher temperature, this reaction, okay, ice turning into water is going to be spontaneous. You use the same concept for this, okay? At higher temperature, okay, if you have the same signs, okay, it is going to be positive. Now, I'm going to teach you about the other way around. Let's say water changing into ice, okay? If you look at this, delta H, okay, water changing into ice is going to be negative, okay? They are going to be exothermic. And your entropy change now, okay, from something that likes to move around, and suddenly now they stay in one place, okay? They are going to become more ordered, okay? So if it is more ordered, it's going to be negative, okay? You can see that they have the same signs over there, okay? But, okay, when this reaction will happen, okay, water will turn into ice when they are below zero degrees. So it means the reaction will be here. At what condition water turns into ice? They are spontaneous at lower temperature. You apply this, okay, you apply this over here, okay, which is going to be if you have delta H, delta S, which is going to be the same sign, delta H and delta S is going to be same sign, negative, negative, okay. What you can memorize over here is, okay, when the temperature, if it is positive and positive, you see, Okay, I think I, I like to teach my student, think positive, 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 think positive, think positive. Temperature is high, okay? If it is negative, negative, think negative. Temperature is lower, okay? If this is how you can predict. Now, how do I represent all this in a simple form like this, okay? This is going to be quadrant, okay? Now, this one, okay, if let's say I put over here, entropy is positive. L let me change the color. Okay, let's say I put entropy is positive. Okay, here entropy negative. And let's say this one I put positive and this one I put negative. Okay, if I come over here, positive and positive, yeah? Okay, negative and positive. Okay, this one is going to be positive and negative. Okay, this one is going to be negative and negative, the quadrants, okay? Now, what I want you to look into is going to be, remember, different is easy. Okay, different is easy. How easy? Okay, let's see. Entropy is negative. Okay, they are going to become more uh, ordered. So they are going to be non-spontaneous. Entropy is positive. They are disordered. Enthalpy is negative. Exothermy, they are getting hot. Okay, most likely the reaction is spontaneous. So all this will happen at any temperature. So you identify that quadrant first. Now, the one that is slightly difficult is going to be this one. Okay, I told you, the same signs, okay? But I taught you this, okay? If, let's say, positive and positive, think positive. Negative and negative, think negative, okay? What does it mean? The reaction is spontaneous, okay, spontaneous, at high temperature. The reaction is spontaneous at low temperature. This is very, very, very important, okay? And I make it very, very easy for you, okay? This is very important, okay? But if you look into summary, yeah, okay? What we need to know from this chapter, okay? You need to know about, okay, the equation, which I, told you about the equation and you need to know how to perform calculation done okay we need to tell whether the reaction is feasible or not whether a reaction is spontaneous or not using the sign of Gibbs free energy which is supposed to be negative negative means feasible yeah and the last one that I taught you about the quadrants and so on okay it just talks about effect of temperature change okay on the feasibility of the reaction given the standard enthalpy and entropy change. Very, very important.
Okay. Now, some of you will be wondering, you know, okay, how do, uh, how am I going to be asked this kind of question in uh, my actual exam? Yeah. Uh, this one, I give you the answer over here. Okay. It's quite easy to do. Yeah. You can discuss, you can try with your teachers. Yeah. But I will go for the second one. Okay. This is also another from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's 2016 paper. Yeah. I know it's a bit uh, not clear over there, but Okay, you have the PowerPoint slide, you can just go through it, yeah? So here, you see uh, A, okay, they have given you the, the formula, and then you need to explain, okay, whether this following process will lead to increase or decrease in entropy, okay? Do remember, magnesium ACL, magnesium plus ACL, okay, they are going to give you magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. Do remember, solid, okay, aqueous, and suddenly you have gas, Entropy automatically will increase. Entropy is positive, okay? Because what? Gas is formed. Can you see N over there? If you don't mention gas is being formed, okay, you are not going to get the answer. Uh, you are not going to get the marks, okay? Please remember this, okay? Entropy, you must tell, you must tell the explanation. What is the explanation? Gas is being formed, yeah? Hydrogen gas is being formed. And if you have this solid potassium chloride dissolving in water, you know, so uh, dissolve, okay, something that is powder, when you they dissolve, they become aqueous, okay? So what does it mean? Okay, the entropy is, of course, going to become positive, okay? It's going to be more disordered, okay? Because why? They are going to change into, okay, free-moving ions, aqueous ions, okay? You must mention, okay? You must mention. And then the third one, steam condensing to become water steam is gas okay gas changing into liquid now gas changing into liquid it means from disordered you are going to become ordered okay so this is going to be entropy change is going to be negative why yeah you can say that gas is decreasing you don't have gas okay so decrease in gas okay you can just mention about that Okay, so you need to mention about gas, yeah? Please remember, you see all this answer, they want to see that, okay? They want to see that. Now, for today's lesson, it's going to be, that is all the three parts are from the previous le lesson, you know, the lecture two. Okay, but here, okay, if you look over here, it's going to be, they're asking you to calculate Gibbs free energy, okay? Now, you see, yeah, like what we have discussed earlier, okay, all this information are given. Okay, you have 298, okay, use the same formula and so on, okay, calculate the entropy change, you should be able to calculate Gibbs free energy. Let's say you finish calculating and it's going to be 64.8. Okay, you calculated. Okay, I'm very sure you can calculate. Okay, if you are not sure, then you refer to this, yeah, you refer to this. Now, I'm more interested with the, with the set, uh, part two. Okay, explain with reference of Gibbs free energy why this reaction becomes more feasible at higher temperature. Please recall the concept of quadrant that I taught you. Can you see here, this is positive? And I hope you can see this, this is positive. Same signs, difficult, okay? Same signs are difficult. But I told you, positive and positive think positive. Okay, positive and positive, think positive. Now, they say the reaction becomes feasible at high temperature. Of course, why? Okay, because if it is going to be feasible, it means I'm only going to get negative value of Gibbs free energy only under what condition? Okay, the condition is Gibbs free energy is going to be delta H minus temperature delta S. It means that, okay, my value is positive here. If you have higher value, Okay, over here, the temperature. It means that, okay, this entire value, okay, the T e delta S should be greater than 117. Okay, it should be greater than 117 because 117 minus maybe 118, you will get negative one. So it means it must be greater than 117. Okay. That is the explanation that you're supposed to give. If you don't trust me, you see, you can read, okay? This is more positive, okay, than delta H, okay? Once you mention about that, or you say that it is going to be increasing, okay, your Gibbs free energy is negative, that is going to be giving you the one mark, okay? This is what you need to know, yeah? 
So that is that is, uh, that is for the okay entropy change and the Gibbs free energy. Now, of course, I want to start okay introducing to you okay about electrolysis. Okay, now let's uh, learn a little bit about electrolysis. Nothing too complicated. Yeah. So if you look over here, okay, what is electrolysis? Okay, it's a decomposition of compound okay to its element by electric current. So it means you need to give. Okay, the battery must be there. Okay, and uh, the electrolyte. Okay, it, uh, it can be. Okay, it can be either molten or concentrated, or can be aqueous. Yeah, and the electrode. Okay, must be able to conduct electricity, which can be carbon. Okay, metal. It can be graphite. Okay, and we call the anode. Okay, anode is a positive electrode. Okay, cathode is going to be negative electrode. Okay, this one, okay, you should know. But always remember also, okay, anions, okay, anions, which is negative ions, they like to go to anode, which is, of course, uh, negative ions, they like to go to positive terminal, yeah. And cathode, okay, will attract cations, okay. What are cations? Cations are positive ions, okay. If you still don't remember this, I think, one of the best ways to look at T, T looks like positive, okay? Cations are positive. Or you have a lot of N, and ions that have is negative ions, okay? Negative ions, okay? Power supply must be direct current. This is a simple electrolysis uh, cell, yeah? So if you look at this electrolysis, okay? Electrolysis basically functions as a redox reaction, okay? So cations, you see positive ions, they will move to cathode. That's why the term came in, cations, cathode. Okay, so if it is positive uh, electrons, okay, for example, if I'm talking about zinc, uh, zinc chloride, positive ions is zinc 2 plus. What will happen to zinc 2 plus? Generally, they will accept the electron and then they give you zinc. Yeah, so that is going to be when you accept electron, do remember oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electron. Reduction is gain of electron. Okay, so in this case, this is gaining of electrons, so therefore, this is going to be reduced. That's why it's reduction, yeah? Anions, okay, move to anode, okay? So anions, uh, like for example, Cr minus, what will happen? Okay, they will lose the electron to give you, let's say, like this. When they lose electron, I don't put like this, okay? I will bring this over here, then I put two electrons over there. So it means that Cl minus has lost electron. So if they lost electron, oxidation is loss of electron. So it means that Cl minus is oxidized, okay, oxidation. Okay, this is molten. Okay, do remember if it is molten, there is only two ions, zinc two plus and Cl minus, okay, that is molten, okay. And you can combine the reaction, okay, you can cancel the electron and then you get this. Everyone should know this, okay. But if it is going to be aqueous, do remember, okay, aqueous will also have H plus and they also have OH minus. Most of the time, OH minus will be selected, yeah? So this one, you go and revise, okay, on electrolysis, yeah? And then which one will be selected and so on, yeah? Now, this one, you can go through yourself, okay? Some, uh, imp uh, how to say, some basic, uh, basic uh, knowledge that you should know, yeah? Like, for example, why ionic compound has to be molten to undergo electrolysis? Because we want the reaction to, uh, it's related to conductivity, right? So if it is going to be not molten, the ions cannot move, yeah? So the ions must be able to move, okay? And so on. You just try all these examples, okay? The answers are given there, okay? Now, the another part that I want to go through with you is going to be what we call as quantitative electrolysis, okay? This is going to be very important, okay? I will discuss this again on Thursday. Now, the mass of substance produced at electrode, like for example, if I'm going to do electrolysis of copper ions, for example, copper 2 plus, plus 2 electron, then you have copper, okay? So this one happens at cathode, okay? So... When this is going to happen, it means I am having deposit of copper. Okay, I'm having deposit of copper. The mass of copper that is going to be produced over there depends on the time, okay, how long I do the electrolysis. And it is also depends on the strength of my electric current. Yeah, this is very important. Now, this one, everyone should know, Q equals to I 
T, okay, this is going to be uh, charge, okay, this is charge, this is going to be current, okay, in amperes, and this time must be always in seconds, please remember that, must be always in seconds, okay, I'm very sure if you study your physics, you know about this, Q equals IT. Now, let's look into Faraday. Now, what is Faraday? Yeah, Faraday is the quantity of electric charge. It's not charge, right? Okay, it's the quantity of electric charge carried by one mole of electrons. Okay, one mole of electrons. Okay, so the charge, okay, let's say, for example, if I have an equation, okay, one mole of electron, yeah, what is the charge that is carried by this equation, for example? Okay, or by this equation, what I can come up with a conclusion. The conclusion is quite simple. One mole of silver can be deposited if I use one mole, right? One Faraday. Okay, one Faraday for one mole. Okay, so it means that one Faraday, one mole. Okay, but what one? Uh, what is one Faraday? Uh, this one also they have found out. Okay, the Faraday, one Faraday is going to be ninety six thousand five hundred. I think this number. Uh, by the time we finish this chapter, you will remember this number like something like your Avogadro constant. You will memorize already. Yeah, very important. Yeah. So if I have okay different equation like this, okay, you can see two moles. It means that two Faraday is required to deposit one mole of copper. Okay, you look at the equation. Okay, you look at the equation. So it means that two Faraday, one Faraday is this value, two Faraday. I know that how many columns, okay, this one, you find out how many columns, it will deposit one mole of copper. Okay, so once you have this, okay, we can calculate, you know, uh, if in this case, okay, this one is two Faraday. Okay, uh, two Faraday for what? One mole of Cl2. If you look over here, four. Four Faraday for what? One mole of oxygen to be given out. Or four Faraday for two moles of water to be given out. Okay, so you can come up with these conclusions. Yeah? And how to do the calculation and so on, okay, we will discuss next lesson. Okay, you can also go through the examples over here. Okay, but I will discuss in the next lesson, okay, because there are I don't want to do half of it. Yeah, so we will discuss in the next lesson and how to do uh, how to use this concept okay to calculate Avogadro constant okay there is a file over here you can also do this investigation with your teachers yeah uh, to calculate Avogadro constant it means you can be Avogadro okay you can be Avogadro the guy who discovered Avogadro constant yeah you can discover you can calculate okay using this uh, worksheet yeah you can calculate so you try okay and then this is the summary, okay? The summary here, okay, we have not, we just know the relationship, but we have not applied yet, okay? So this part all the way to here will be covered by your teachers, but, okay, on Thursday, yeah, I will go through all these uh, uh, calculations with you, okay? So we can also cover this part, yeah? So this is very, very important. Now, so before we end, okay, so I want uh, to show you, um, I want you guys, okay, I will share the link for the reflection, okay, and then we will do also uh, a quizzes as well, okay, hold on. Okay, I will share this one, okay, first, hold on. Okay, this is going to be your, your reflection. Please save it somewhere, okay? Reflection for this uh, lesson, yeah? And then now, okay, we are going to do the quizzes, okay? So it's simple seven questions, okay? I will start now, okay, hold on. I'll pass to you the link. Okay, please join the quizzes.
Yeah, I'll wait until it reaches 100. Okay, once it reaches 100, we will start. Because of lack of time, yeah, those who are joining, you can still join. I will start first for those who are already here. For this one, okay, while you're doing, okay, it's quite simple questions, okay, I don't think so, we need to also go through that, okay, okay, but there will be this quiz, I will open again as an assignment after your, I will share the link, okay, of the video, you can go through, and I will share to you the, the scribbled uh, version of the PowerPoint, uh, you can also go and read, okay, everything will be uploaded in the, uh, Google Sites, okay, so you can just get all the information over there, okay. I hope, okay, I hope uh, it's clear, okay, I think we just need to study more on the electrochemistry, the beginning part, okay, and then learn about the Faraday, okay, how to use the Faraday to calculate, but this Thursday, I think your teachers will follow up on this, okay, but this Thursday, we will go on with the calculation and the other parts, okay. That's it from me today, okay, uh, please remember to do your reflection, yeah, that's it from me, okay, See you guys. Bye. Thank you so much, Mr. Gopi. Thank you, Mr. Bye. Gopi. Bye, teachers. Bye.